Immersion. It's kind of the entire selling point of VR. VR is already immersive as it is, but there's one mythical upgrade that brings the immersion to a whole new level. IMU, Space Stations, Tundra, Vive, Slime, it's full body tracking. Getting full body isn't anywhere near as clear as it should be. So in this video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know before you hit buy and give you a bit of a warning about full body tracking. Let's start simple. What is it? Who's it for? And why bother? When somebody says full body tracking, they're usually referring to these. They're Vive trackers, and they were first introduced in 2017. Vive essentially took the internals of one of their weird controllers, strapped it onto a hockey puck, and called it a tracker. They first marketed these trackers to add physical stuff into VR. Things like light guns, tennis rackets, a bunch of really useless plastic garbage. It was the VR chat community who decided to spend hundreds of dollars on these things just to sit in front of a mirror. And boy did VR chat go crazy with it. First, people used three trackers, two on the feet and one on the hip. This is the normal full body setup. But if you're Gucci, you can use a fourth tracker on your chest. And since you're made of money, why not throw four more on your elbows and knees? It's pretty simple. The more trackers you have, the more detailed tracking you get. And if you ever get the chance to meet somebody with 10 or 11 point full body tracking, it is really, really cool to see. It'll only cost you, huh? Yeah, it gets expensive pretty quick. I don't want you to think that double digit tracking is necessary. Trust me, three trackers is perfect for 99% of us, but just three trackers from Vive still come in at around $350. And you can't just use the trackers alone. You'll also need about $400 worth of base stations and a PC to run it all. So let's talk about some more options that are more wallet friendly. Spoiler alert, if you already have base stations, just get Vive or Tundra trackers. It's worth it. And before we really jump in, there is an issue that all of the full body options I'm going to talk about have but it really isn't their fault. Not every avatar has full body support. So if you can, maybe get one of your friends who does have full body to try out your avatar first, just to make sure everything still works. The second issue is proportions. If your proportions don't match the avatar's own proportions, like a femboy's long legs or a sleep paralysis demon's arms, you're always gonna look a little awkward. You can blame God for this. If you're a questy, a reverb and chill type of guy, or God forbid a cosmos bro, Blech. and don't have base stations already, here's some good options for you. In terms of full body tracking without VR's expensive black box overlords, Slime VR is one of the most recognizable names by far. Slime is pretty special. They were the first big project to really show the potential of IMUs to replace base stations. Base stations are something that a lot of us have a love-hate relationship with. They provide outright the best tracking quality, but not only are they expensive, they're also a wear item. One day they work just fine, and the next they might not due to any number of potential mechanical problems. Not having to worry about them and still having full body would be a dream, and that's where IMUs come in. See, unlike me, IMUs are entirely self-reliant. Essentially, they calibrate in one spot and then use a bunch of wizard magic to figure out where they moved in relation to that initial point. They're used on motorcycles and cars for dynamics control and even high explosive rockets to help guide them towards their target. If it can guide a rocket, I'm pretty sure it can track your foot. Unlike the US military though, these things are incredibly cost effective. Slime offers a selection of kits, the cheapest being $165 or 16 pounds of dino nuggies, my favorite cryptocurrency. That means Slime's base full body tracking is cheaper than a single 2.0 base station. What? The Gucci Slime option is a whole 30 pounds of Dino Nuggies, or $295 if you're European. That kit includes their normal full body with added elbows, knees, and chest. Plus, they come in this awesome atomic purple color that reminds me of the era of cool tech when everything didn't have to be sterilized glass slabs. Slime isn't the only IMU option out there, though. There's also Hari Tora, which I was lucky enough to get some side by side comparisons with thanks to my community member, Tugston. Hari Tora comes in around $350 for the legs and hip tracking expansion, which gets it up to Slime in terms of tracking accuracy. The reason why I price it out with the hip expansion is without it, your avatar feels weightless. The coolest thing about Hari Tora is easily the fact that you can charge all of the tracking with just one cable. Charging trackers is a flat out pain in the ass that usually results in a messy pile of trackers on your floor. So being able to charge your entire full body setup with one cable is a huge plus. But if it all sounds too good to be true, it's usually because it is. The current IMU based trackers, Slime, Haritora, and Makopi are a bit difficult to get your hands on. Slime says that they're shipping early 2024, but I really don't know if I'd hold my breath. I love the team at Slime and all the work that they're doing, but they had previous delays due to supply chain issues, and that's really out of their control. Makopi is also just a little bit too expensive for me to recommend. It's neat though. For Hari Tora, Shiftall, the company behind 
find it is based in Japan. And like all good Japanese things, it's not easy to get your hands on if you're stateside or a tea drinker. Now it's time for a hard truth. Tracking quality with IMUs can honestly be a bit scuffed at times. It's really good for what it is, don't get me wrong, but the precision that I find necessary when recording just isn't there. Vive trackers, the same thing that I use to ERP with, are used in Hollywood VFX studios all the time in place of renting out a much more expensive traditional motion capture rig. And if that's not a testament to their accuracy and quality, then I don't know what is. IMU tracking is definitely good enough for farting around in VR chat, but they're very susceptible to drift no matter what headset you run them on. Much like me, IMUs tend to lose touch with reality. Over time, IMUs get more and more inaccurate until eventually they're just flat out in the wrong spot and need to be completely recalibrated. This sounds a bit like a stupid issue, but if you're newer to VR, this can pretty easily give you a headache or straight up make you throw up. And that's IMUs. They're cheaper than Vive or Tundras, but in the end they're still pretty expensive. So what if you want full body for say 20 bucks? In this price range, people used to use Xbox Connect for full body and even a system that used your webcam and printed QR codes to track you for dirt cheap. I respect the work that went into them, but it can only get so good. These janky methods used to be the only cheap option, but maybe the best cheap trackers are no trackers at all. And this is Standable. I'd be shocked if you haven't heard about it by now. Instead of using physical trackers, Standable uses inverse kinematics. And if that sounds familiar to you, it's because you've already used IK before. It sounds intimidating, but it's pretty simple. Even with the most most basic setup, like a Quest 2, you've got a controller that tracks your hand and a headset that tracks your head. But VRChat has no way of telling where your elbow, shoulder, and chest is between them. So it uses a fancy algorithm to figure out where all of these pieces are most likely to be. Think of Standable like what VRChat already uses, but on Ritalin. Instead of trying to fill in the blanks, Standable is doing its best to figure out where your entire body is with basically no information. Earlier, I said IMUs use wizard magic, but this is a whole new level. Nice to see ya. Ah, oh, fuck, I hit my wall. <laughs> Fun fact, the dude behind Standable just got out of high school. When I was around that age, I spent most of my time in the bathroom Okay, now I know what you're thinking. For $20 and with those limitations, it can't be that good, right? Standable is still in its earliest versions, but there have been multiple times now where I've been talking to people and eventually I ask them what full body they have, only to be shocked when they tell me that it's Standable. Unless you're doing some inappropriately close snooping, Standable is incredibly convincing at pulling off the illusion of full body. Before I start with the bad parts of Standable, I want to remind you that Standable is in its earliest public stages and will likely only get better with time. The downsides of Standable are pretty forgivable for just how cheap and easy it is to use. For starters, you can't actually kick someone in the fun bags like a true sportsman. The program can only do so much with what little data it has, so you kind of have to temper your expectations. Some people run into issues with setup, but to be honest, they give you all of the advice that you need directly on the Steam store page. Standable fits in perfectly for people who have to be a bit portable, or maybe you're balling on a budget. If you like traveling or have a job that sends you on trips often, a Quest 2, a gaming laptop to run it, and Standable are an absolutely killer combo. I'm not saying it's flawless, nothing really ever is, but if you already use your PC to power your Quest and don't have any full body yet, Standable is the single best $20 that you can spend right now. Those are all the main types of full body, but who is full body really for and do you actually need it? When Vive trackers were new to the scene, it used to be pretty rare to find anyone who had full body. Really, it was only the most dedicated players players who had them, and it was usually rich furries. Nowadays though, full body is so common that I'd say there's a near 50-50 shot of someone you meet using it. Out of 58,000-ish daily players, that's a lot of full body users. Why do so many people get it? Especially when a lot of VR games just kinda suck. They aren't fun, or if they are, they're just really short. VR chat is a different story. And to be honest, I could say the same about any social VR game. You get all of the community-made content. That's the games, the worlds, and especially the people themselves. It's probably the most content-rich VR game out there. I'm gonna go out on a limb here, but most VR users play VR chat or any other social VR game and with good reason. With 100% confidence, I can tell you that VR chat will destroy your sleep schedule at some point, and full body really just makes it that much better. But before you go out and start buying stuff, here's a warning about full body that you'll only get here. You've stayed this far into the video, so it's time to have a sit down with Papa Boneless. Over the years, I've had a lot of friends become completely different people once they get full body, for better or worse. I've had friends go from the most straight and narrow person on the planet to being as straight as a curly fry in only a matter of days. And trust me, I love curly fries. But when I say full body brings immersion to the next level, it can reach a point that it is legitimately dangerous to your mental health. If you have any confusion about your gender identity or who you are as a person, it can either be the single most beneficial thing for you, or it can put you into a mental health hellhole with a snap of the fingers. Now, I can only speak about 
my personal experiences with authority, so take this all with a grain of salt. I would say getting full body was good for me, but there was a time where all it did was make me even more confused about myself. Like all humor, that goofy meme of a guy standing in front of a mirror has some truth to it. On a lighter note, full body honestly spoils you. Once you have it, you'll never be able to go back. That's easily the biggest downside to full body as a whole. There just aren't that many games that support it. You get used to looking down and being able to wiggle your toes, so going back to a game that doesn't support it can feel really, really weird. The list of VR games that support full body is growing, but for right now, the list is pretty small. Be sure to join my Discord using the link down below to take part in meetups. This week, we're doing VR chat public lobby bingo. It should be a really good time. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons for making content creation possible for me. And if you're still here watching this end screen, I truly appreciate your support. Comment beans down below so I can personally thank you in the comments. Have a good day, amigos.